Hi there, my name is Tristan O'Connor. I'm a digital sales specialist here at ClearTouch, and today we're going to discuss the 6000K Plus, uh, one of our panel models that has quite a few different unique solutions built in. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the software that also comes with it, our Snowflake Interactive software, which features the Canvas whiteboard, our screen sharing collaboration software collage, and our device manager command. The 6000 series features three different sizes, a 65, 75, and 86 inch display. Uh, unlike our 7000 series that you see here, it is an IR based panel, which means that you're breaking beams of light across the screen and that's how it calculates where you're touching. We updated the 6000K Plus just last summer where we added a 9950 chip, which currently runs Android 9, but soon with the firmware update will run Android 11. We also feature dual band Wi-Fi, as well as a 2.1 forward facing soundbar sub included. We feature a dual port ethernet switch. It is a gig switch in case there's only one drop in the room. And of course the USB-C single cable solution. Along with that, we offer HDMI inputs and touch inputs and also an optional PC module. The PC module fits directly into the side of any of the models of our panel. These feature full desktop class chips. The baseline level would be a 10th generation Intel i5 six core CPU with eight gigs of RAM and a 256 gigabyte solid state hard drive. You can get it pre-imaged with Windows 10 Pro or you can image it yourself and tie it directly into your domain or directory. We feature full desktop class chips and we enjoy, we definitely suggest these uh, because they make the device more of a dedicated learning device. As you can see here, we also feature the power connection and a 128 pin bus, which just makes the transition into this Windows environment quite seamless. Now the PC module isn't required. I am running it here because Windows does have a lot of features that are built for touch. But if that's not the direction you were going, you can always just use the Android side of the panel. Where you'd open it up out of the box, it would look something like this, although I've added Chrome from our curated ClearTouch store. There's a number of vetted appli applications that live within that ClearTouch store, and it's easy to add others if what you're looking for isn't there already. Within the Android system, we also have a universal overlay. So no matter what input I'm on, I'm going to have access to the same tools. You'll see these menus floating on the side here, and you'll also see this floating code up here, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Those are accessible no matter what you've got plugged into the panel. For example, right now I've got a Chromebook plugged into the panel using an HDMI and a touch cable. If I wanted to switch inputs, I can just swipe up, and then I'm going to select the Chromebook. I personally renamed the input, that way I know exactly which input to use. And as you can see here, I've got the full touch capability. I'm even driving the device that's connected. And I'm going to have access to those same overlay tools which are available on either side of the panel. And don't forget the floating code. Now I want to talk about what some of those overlay tools actually are. Firstly, at the very top here you'll see I've got the home button for the Android system. So I'm going to jump back to that real quick. Now in the Android side, I'm going to have a couple more buttons, a back button and a button that'll allow me to check which applications are open. I've also got access to the Canvas uh, Android whiteboard and of course our annotation tool. Now the annotation tool is going to give me a lot of options. I can write on top of anything, be it a website I've opened in Chrome or maybe something in my Google Slides or Google Documents. I'm going to be able to use all 20 points of touch, be able to change colors very quickly just by tapping on the pen tool. And of course, I've got things like eraser gestures built in, in case I made a mistake. There's a number of ways to save these annotations. I think it's important to see that as well. Uh, one of the ways is to click the share button. And what that does is it takes an entire screenshot of everything on the board, be it a Google slide or you name it, maybe just the home screen of an Android device, as well as all of those annotations, and it makes them available via a QR code. I can enlarge that QR code, so even in a virtual uh, setup, kind of like this one, 
it would be easy to be able to scan this and grab that image down to your device. If that's not the direction you'd like to go, maybe you're in a classroom where there's 30 odd kids trying to scan and that's not ideal, we also have the cloud option. And what that does is it allows you to save that same picture or image and share it to Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive. There's a couple of other ways to connect devices that I want to talk about. And one of the most popular is probably using the USB-C single cable solution. So I've got a MacBook here, and what I'm going to do is take this USB-C cable, and I'm just going to plug it directly into my Mac. Now, any device with a USB-C will be able to do this. And as you can see, it jumped directly to that Type-C input, which I could have also reached by swiping up here. It also calibrated the window for me, and on top of that, I'm getting full touch response. Beyond that, I'm even charging my laptop right now. So the USB-C is a pretty unique way to connect devices. And what we've shown so far is just a number of different cables connecting these. But what about wireless sharing? Using our collage system, we're able to cast upwards of nine screens to the board at once and connect over 60 devices to the board at one time. Obviously, that's network permitting, but let's look at exactly how we can do that. So first, I'm going to start off with my MacBook Pro. My MacBook was connected right before I started this video. I opened collage and I typed in that six digit code, which is sometimes nine digits, depending on how complicated your network is. It's always floating in part of that overlay. And I've mentioned it a few times at this point. I typed in the code and it knows exactly which screen to share to. So I can click start sharing and this collage system supports extended desktop mode. I can click mirror and just like that, my device is right on the board. So it's wirelessly casting. Collage works on the back of AirPlay 2, Miracast, and Chromecast. So if I were using any of those devices, this is exactly what you would expect. But there's a couple of added features that we're pretty excited about. For example, on a Mac and a PC, even completely wireless, I'm able to get one point of touch response. So I can drive from the board instead of my device. So of course, whether I'm facilitating and walking around and running the, uh, running the board from my device, or if I'm up at the board, maybe moving through a slide of sorts, I'm gonna get that one point of touch. And I've also got access to some of those overlay tools. There's a couple that I did not mention earlier. For example, spotlight tool that will allow you to change the opacity. Maybe if you wanna focus in learning on one portion or another. And also, I've got access to everyone's favorite, a timer. <laughs> now, in this wireless screencast, I've got a couple of different options, right? I could close down, uh, potentially even share video. But what I want to do next is connect another device to show you what that would look like, especially from a student perspective in a classroom. What I've got here is my Chromebook, and I'm going to open up Collage. And what it's asking for now is that same floating code. It's important to note that that code does rotate, but I can change that to static if I'd like through the settings. Now I'm gonna click Start Mirroring and share the screen. And what you'll see here is not only a window at the top, but also at the bottom that's asking me if I want to share or allow that Chromebook to connect. So on the actual flat panel, the window is at the bottom. That top window was on my MacBook. So whether I'm facilitating and asking a student to share or running a meeting and asking someone else to share, I'm in control even if I'm not at the board. However, of course I'm at the board, all I had to do was tap the bottom corner and accept. Now in this multi-screen mode, I still have access to those overlay tools that we mentioned. And of course, I can maximize, focus in on one screen, minimize, etc. I'm gonna feature that one point of touch on my Mac and PC. Now you'll notice on the Chromebook, I don't have that ability yet. However, something we're working on. When I'm done, I can click the power button and I'm right back to that input that I was on earlier. One of the benefits here is that I did not 
fully disconnect the devices. So in the device tray, that Chromebook and that MacBook are both still connected. That way the users don't have to type in that floating code over and over again to share. They can manually disconnect or they can be disconnected from the board as well. This also supports non-client mirroring and it works in tandem with someone who's already using Collage. So for example, if you have a guest speaker who comes in and would like to have access to the board to maybe share a presentation, then you'd be able to turn on Chromecast, turn on AirPlay, or turn on Miracast with the tap of a button. Now there are some downsides to non-client mirroring. For example, if I'd like to cast from my device just using the non-client mirroring, I'm not going to get that reverse touch or touchback capability. So you would want to use collage if you like the idea of driving your device wirelessly. Also, if you have quite a few of these, uh, be it on campus or in the building, you would have to search through a large number uh, within the device tray to figure out which one you're actually connecting to using non-client mirroring. So there's some benefits to that kind of code and go setup. There's quite a few other features that we're really excited about when it comes to the 6000K+. Specifically, when we look at the management system command, there's a number of tools to make sure that these are running properly and you're getting the most out of their lifespan. Command allows you to take a single panel and put it into multiple groups. So you can group panels in a way that's easiest for you to manage, uh, be it by age group of use or location. I can even go in here and look at each panel individually. For example, I'm gonna look at the panel we've been working on now. I actually get a real-time update of what's on the panel itself, which updates every few seconds. I can change the device name, maybe add some tags to search for this easier. On top of that, I've got the model number and serial number if I ever had to call our support. And of course, all of the network cards that are within the panel. It even tells me which Wi-Fi it's connected to. This is also an area I can collect data to see exactly how panels are used specifically each panel or groups, and of course, which applications have been pushed out to the panel or are enabled or disabled innately. I can also send singular commands to the panel individually or by the group. So for example, if I had a Wake on LAN server and had my panel uh, plugged into an ethernet cable, I can set these up to power on a specific time throughout the day or week. Also, I've got remote power off, remote reboot, remote screen lock, and I can update the wallpaper and boot logo for that more personalized feel. If I have a large number of panels and don't want to work on them individually, you can create what are called profiles, which essentially gives a unified look and setup for your groups of panels. You can do it by age group as we've done here, or maybe by who's using them. And also you get to decide which applications they have, you can push third-party APKs right through here. I can switch inputs remotely, and I can even schedule out firmware and software updates. Below are a record of different commands uh, that have been sent through the history of the panel. I can see when they were sent, which commands were sent, and by whom. Even what's in schedule and what's to come. Going back to the interactive flat panels individually or by the group, I also have some digital messaging and media capabilities. So for example, if I wanted to send a text to this specific panel I've been working on today, I could say it's an early dismissal and have that running across the top of the board. And as you can see, it's right here on this specific panel or maybe a group of panels. We've also provided what's called operational rights that's what that little X in the top corner does. And essentially it allows the end user to decide if they want that message scrolling or not. This comes in handy when we start looking at adding different multimedia in. So for example, I can send out up to a 300 megabyte file to any number of panels all at one time remotely through our command system, which is accessed through a website. As you can see here, I've sent out that image and I did provide operational rights. So maybe in the case of using this for some digital signage, 
but I would like someone to have access to the actual panel for its use, I can provide that operational rights. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to take it away until I decided as the person who sent that command. I'm going to click the X here, and we'll jump into a couple other features. Included in command is the ability to decode RTMP, RTSP, and HTTP live streaming. We call this live channel, and it allows you to pull in any number of live streams directly to any number of boards. This can be scheduled ahead of time, selected uh, for how long it's sent, and of course, you can send it to individual panels as well. Now this is also going to give me the ability to change the volume, so if it does come in a little bit loud, I'm able to minimize that, uh, lower the volume, or if it's quiet, obviously make it louder. We've seen this used in many ways, for everything from morning announcements to uh, just a way to quickly address anyone in the building who may have access to the panel. A couple of the features that we think are very important. Our alert system, a great way to send a quick message, especially a very important message to all of the panels. And also the ability to create different user profiles. You can design roles based on where the user falls within your hierarchy of your organization. For example, you can even come in and customize a role, which would allow you to decide which commands they have access to and for which panels.